Hi guys, welcome back to another Scout the Defender YouTube video and to the first proper video since having Scout back in the garage after all of the work that we had done uh, over at LR Motors sorting out the engine issues. If you don't know that story, check back at the last video where I give a recap and uh, I guess a first drive since we got uh, the problems fixed. So really happy to have Scout back. In today's video, I thought I'd give an overview of the ORE rear wheel carrier. Now, this is something that I've fitted for about a year now, and I'm going to give a review of what it's been like living with it and why I chose the ORE rear wheel carrier. Now, I fitted this long before I had the YouTube channel or even the Instagram page, um, so I never actually documented either installing it or what it's actually like as a product to use daily. So today, I thought I'd give you that, I guess, year review and uh, go into the details about why I think it's probably the best wheel carrier on the market. So why would you go for a rear wheel carrier in the first place? If you've got a, a tire on the back door and you're going off road or on trails or even on road and you're bouncing up and down, you're putting a lot of strain into the rear door. And there's actually pictures online of a lot of people's doors that have actually cracked through the weight of the tire uh, going through and transferred into the door, which is obviously a pretty costly thing to have to resolve. The beauty of a rear wheel carrier basically means that you're taking that weight and transferring it to somewhere else on the body. So whether you're looking at an ORE carrier or any other wheel carrier, you are going to be solving that problem of reducing the crack door. But why go for an ORE carrier over any of the others on the market? Well, the answer is simple. They have a singular system that directs all of the weight transfer through one single point on the Defender, and that's the rear cross member, where obviously there's enough strength. Other systems have multiple points where the weight is transferred through, often through the cross member, but also through the body where you often have to drill into the body to fit the carrier. With the ORE system, you don't have to do any drilling. It bolts through the existing holes in the cross member and attaches also to the rear door using the existing holes. Obviously, no weight is transferred through the rear door. It all travels through the arm and into the cross member. So it's a really simple install and ensures that you don't actually have to do any drilling and you're protecting your door from cracking for the future. Now you may have seen people doing this online, but this is just to demonstrate the pure strength of that rear wheel carrier. So the weight is being transferred through the cross member, all of the weight is taken off the rear door, and obviously with the engineering, it's strong enough to hold me on it. The other benefit of going for an ORE system is the powder coating technology. So you'll have seen on probably other products that have powder coating, often if you scratch or scrape it and it gets oxidized and rusts, the rest of the powder coating around it will blister and crack. With the ORE system, that does not happen. So if I were to scrape or bump or chip off any of the powder coating, that area will remain contained and the rest of the rust won't spread underneath and peel off all of the powder coating. So it ensures that it's protected for many years to come and will continue to look great. Now, as I said at the start of the video, I've had this rear wheel carrier fitted for about a year. And as you can see from the close-ups that I'll put over now, it looks basically brand new. It's worn really well. I've not had to do anything in terms of um, cosmetics to ensure that it's stayed of, uh, looking great. The powder coating technology has protected it as much as possible. There's no surface rust on any of the fixings because they're all stainless. And in general, it just still looks as clean and as new as it first did. Now, as with all products of this nature, it's important to keep it serviced to ensure that it's running as smooth and as optimal as possible. So every three to four months, you should be ensuring that you're greasing the bearings or checking that there's enough grease within the bearing container itself. So that's really simple because the guys have built in the grease nipple 
a simple grease gun and a few pumps of grease every three to four months will ensure that the bearings are running as smooth as possible and the door is swinging freely. It's a really simple thing, but to stay on top of it ensures that your carrier will run as smoothly and as optimally as possible for many years to come. All you need is a grease gun and a tube of grease. The grease gun was about 15 pounds from Halfords and the tube of grease about three pounds. Just ensure you get a lithium based grease when you're doing this job. Now if like me you've owned your carrier for a while and you originally topped it up with grease, it's important to ensure that you stay on top of the maintenance every three or four months. So you shouldn't need the full 80 grams of grease as you did when you first bought the carrier. You should just put a small amount in uh, and be able to pump a small amount into the void again until you feel resistance or if you see any grease popping on either side of the seals. If you do happen to pop a seal as you're pushing, you've probably pumped a little bit too hard, but you can get a flathead screwdriver into the space and push the seals back. Just do that really carefully so you don't damage any of the powder coating or any of the seal. Then it's as simple as pumping. If you pump slowly to ensure that you don't push the seals either side of the, I guess, bearing housing out, and just keep an eye on it as you pump and ensure as you pump, you move slowly and, uh, and just do it over stages to ensure you don't overload the chamber and you give it enough time for the grease to move throughout the bearings. So I'll just squeeze gently and pump the grease into the chamber ensuring at all times that I'm keeping an eye, see if any oil, um, sorry, grease is coming out and then I've topped it up to the max. About 80 grams of grease should be enough to fill the chamber. You should also feel resistance and at that point stop to check that you're not getting any grease coming out of the um, bearing housing. And there we have it, it's as easy as that to service your carrier to ensure that it's running as smooth and as optimally as possible. So there we have it guys, that is a review of the ORE rear wheel carrier. A product that I love but hadn't yet filmed a video on it on the channel so I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video and it's helped you I guess when you're deciding about which rear wheel carrier to purchase. I've had so many comments about the rear wheel carrier that it's just about time that I did a video on it. As always if you like the video please give it a thumbs up and also drop a comment down below and also be sure to subscribe to the channel for plenty more videos coming soon and I'll see you then.